we just left uh, Fire Hole, uh, Wyoming. We were attempting to be a camp host out there, and I think we changed the name of the uh, Fire Hole campground to uh, Hell Hole. It had rattlesnakes all over the place, but I must have seen six or seven of them. Uh, one of them came right up into the camp. Um, it's their backyard, it's their territory, but they had a lot of mice in all the camps that was in that area for uh, the camp uh, company that we worked for. It was pretty ridiculous, and so we just, we hated it, we had to move on. So we're, we drove about uh, 225, 250 miles from that place. And I'm going to turn around and show you where we're at because it's pretty spectacular. This is actually about Laramie. So I'm turning the camera around here, see the rig and our bikes, and then I'm going to get out of the shot as much as I can. Look at that. This is where we are. We're up on top of this hill overlooking Laramie. That's Laramie down there where the sun is coming, uh, shining through. That's the city of Laramie. But I'm just going around and I don't think the camera can uh, really show you the beauty. We just had a lot of rain way off in the background over there is uh, a mountain range with snow on it still. We're probably about 8,300 feet elevation. It's about 57 degrees. We just left Firehole, and the reasons why we left and we didn't like it is because I have to look around and look at the view, guys. But one of the reasons why we left it is because it was so flipping hot. And my uh, rig, we uh, hook up the generator to it, and we can run the air conditioning, but uh, it's a big rig. And uh, one air conditioning unit just will not keep that Montana cool. And so we would go to bed uh, in maybe nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, and it would be uh, 75 degrees. And then it would eventually cool down past that, uh, maybe by uh, midnight, one o'clock, around 65 or something like that. And uh, be pretty decent in the morning. But uh, fire hole turned out to be hell hole. And we're really glad to be here. This is just such a gorgeous place. A lot cooler. Definitely gonna use some propane to run tonight. But wow. Wow, we're up in a beautiful forest. Uh, I've done other videos on this area. Uh, put one down in the link in the description. This is a fantastic place to park. If you look way over here in the background, you'll see there's another camper and a tent out there. You park here for free. Laramie, the city, is about 10 miles from here. And the Walmart is right off the first exit, so you can get anything that you need. Water is over by the Abraham Lincoln Memorial statue over there. You can get water there. Trash, that's a little bit more difficult. There's a maverick in town where you can dump uh, uh, your sewer and get water. The prices are decent right now because the election is coming up. You know, they always drop the prices. You know, so whoever's in office can get some credit. Oh, the gas prices are low. Anyway, what a fabulous place. And, uh, we're really glad to be here. Like and subscribe. Keep following us. We'll take you around some really fabulous places, we hope, like this one. It's just another day, another fight. Without the lights, we can't seem to get it right. Get it right, get it right. When I met you, I was complete. Now I see you, it's breaking. Hey guys, welcome to Love's, which is a really good uh, place in a lot of ways because uh, I'm in Fillmore, Utah, and you can see way over there where this car is, there's a dump station, which is nice. I think you have to pay like 10 bucks to use it. And then 
over here on this side where I am there's an RV place and the cost for this place is 53 bucks a night for full hookups and it's okay if you're traveling and you just got to have a place but other than that I don't know if I'd recommend it let me show you why First of all, I'll give you a sign of one of their sites. These are all backups, back in. Have a nice little dog park over there. If you had a puppy and you got a couple of picnic tables, if you have puppies, and they have, you'll see right over here where I am, water, electrical hookups. Okay, all good. I got a little bit of a leak off of my filter there, probably, uh, needs to be replaced it's about that time a little trash they don't give you a very big one because they don't want you to put a lot in it I guess but the other thing you got to watch for is super important is these rocks uh, Patty was uh, backing me in last night when we arrived and she fell over because it's just not very stable she probably should have stood over there where there's a little bit of gravel and level but she was trying to help me get into sight so this is ridiculous could have just been the same kind of gravel and it made it a lot easier for you to stand in and back in. You got a little grass growing back there. That's cute for their dog park. And they've got eight of these uh, back ends. Again, if you're just coming, you're traveling and you want full hookups because it's super hot or super cold, this would probably work. But uh, I can't recommend it because whoever designed it, at least here at this facility, doesn't get it. And let me show you why. Now, I always bring at least three sewer hoses so that I can hook up sewer, I think, just about anywhere. So I got one right here, two here, and the third one back here. Stretched out as far as I can make them. And I got a nice little gap. So I've got to have four hoses before I can use their sewer. Four hoses to reach back here. Now I might be able to back the rig back more over these rocks right here, but uh, it's gonna have to be four feet. And I might be able to do it if I backed in all the way. But you see the situation? They don't get it. Plus the water hose is the same thing. The water's way back here and you gotta really have a long hose to make it work all the way back. I don't have electricity back here. I have it through the side. So I had to hook up the long cable. I have enough cable to do that, but uh, there it is. Loves, 53 bucks a night. Uh, I don't know guys, what do you think? Put it down in the comments. There's Highway 80, there's Abe, Abe over there. See if I can zoom in just a little bit. See Abe? And that's, uh, there's bathrooms in there. Really nice facility that I just showed you a bunch of pictures of. But they also have a lot of picnic table areas where you can come picnic. 
It's early in the morning. It's a little cool right now, but they have them. It's a pretty nice facility. There's another one over there. That's Wyoming, so it's going to be windy, but look right here. Potable water. Right there on that waste valve. This is where we fill up when we're up here. But you can also go down to the Maverick. It was extremely uh, windy, uh, so I decided it'd be best to do a voiceover. But I wanted to show you these RV parking spaces up here at this uh, rest stop. It's a really good place to stop and uh, park your RV and take a, uh, take a nap. Uh, driving fatigue really uh, can cause a lot of problems when you're on the road. And so that's what I'm chatting about here. It's a good place to stop for several hours. I didn't see any signs that said no overnight stays, but it's typical of any of these rest areas. You set up camp, you open up all your slides, put out your cooker, and uh, if you're gonna be in trouble, somebody's gonna come by and say something to you. But uh, this is a great lot and a great uh, rest area. Stop here if you get tired and you need a rest. That's what it's here for. It's just another day, another fight. Without the lights, we can't seem to get it right. Get it right, get it right. When I met you, I was complete. Now I see you, it's breaking me. Did we lose it? Is it my fault? Did I love you far too much? So um just wanted to give you guys a little heads up on what happened with our camp hosting opportunity. So as you can tell, we have moved on and uh, there's some good reasons for that. So let me fill you in. Um, we were looking forward to camp hosting, having a nice place to stay for several months. And uh, we moved into our campsite and within the first 20 days, we were without water for a week. We had an infestation of mice. Um, in fact, one of them got up into the hood of the truck when we were leaving um, and got burned up. Um, we also had an infestation of moths that just, uh, you would drive down the road and they would swarm around you in the thousands. Um, there was also snakes, <laughs> um, a lot. Uh, we could handle a snake here, to, here and there, you know. Um, but we were seeing them almost every day, and they were rattlers. Some of them were big rattlers. Some of them were little ones. Some of them were bull snakes, but a lot of snakes. Um, we also were supposed to have a full hookup site that had um, ability with a generator to run the air conditioner because it gets hot out at uh, Firehole. Obviously, by the name, you would probably guess that. But So Firehole was very hot, and uh, the generator they gave us would not keep up with our air conditioner. So we were using our, air, our generator, and it wouldn't even keep up with one of them. We were going through diesel really quickly, um, or gas, actually, because we have a gas generator. So... We decided to stop camp hosting at that site. Um, we could have handled 
the bugs. We could have handled the mice. We could have handled being without water. We could have handled the snakes. We could have handled the heat. But when you put all of those together, it made it for a very uncomfortable situation. And uh, so we called it quits. And, um, but I want to say that it wasn't all a total waste. We had the opportunity um, of having dinner several times with the coaches because they were camp hosting at a nearby um, campground as well. In fact, that's how we got the job in the first place. Um, and so it was really wonderful to have the opportunity to spend some time with them, good friends. So that's uh, basically the reason why we are no longer camp hosting. If we ever do it again, we will be conscientious about checking out the uh, location a lot better than we did this time because this was very, it was a very uncomfortable situation, which we could have managed one or two of the elements, but not all of them and not all the time. So just a little explanation. So we're at, uh, you can see the washers behind us. We're at a spick and span in Laramie, Wyoming. Yes. We like Laramie, Wyoming a lot because there's a lot of free camping around here. We showed that in earlier earlier videos, but uh, they also have a true value hardware store here where we just filled up propane canisters for three or two ninety nine a gallon. That was it's good. Not bad. It's the fourth of July, so happy fourth of July. What else do you like about Laramie? It's just a good sized city. It's got um, a good sized Walmart and other stores, restaurants. Um, with the college in town or university in town, there's, you know, a lot of the things that college kids are looking for. So, you know, fast food restaurants and other restaurants and things to do around the area. So, um, yeah, it's the Wyoming Cowboys, University of Wyoming. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool here. We like it. It's never really been hot anytime we've been no. here. It's always in the 70s, uh, upper 60s. Yeah. And windy. Once in a while. Always we, windy. Always windy. In fact, uh, it's very calm right now, but uh, up on the hill where we're at, it's supposed to be around 3 o'clock this afternoon. The wind's supposed to kick up. Mm -hmm. And it gets pretty good, but we're in what we call the gravel pit. We'll have to show you that, and that's what makes it really nice. But uh, we like Laramie, and this is spick and span wash, washer or whatever. Laundry mat. Laundry mat's a good place to get your laundry done. I heard you got some bad news. The doctor says a year or two. But I believe in miracles. Have you ever seen a small tree sprouting up through concrete? Cause I think that's what you're gonna do If you ever need my help Then I would come run it from the back room I would do anything to save you, honey The moment you feel unwell I need you to Saw a hail of gunfire And not everybody made it home Lately all you do is run in place Having trouble finding meaning And I can see which way you're leaning But I'll be damned if I just let you fade Never need my help Then I would come running from the back room I would do anything to save you, honey The moment you feel unwell I need you to call out from the darkness We can go back to before it all started Doesn't matter what 
what the odds, what you've heard, where you run Doesn't matter what you've seen, where you've been I will come, hold you up, hear you out Let you cry, talk it out Every single time you ask, I'll be there, I won't look back Doesn't matter what the odds, what you've heard, where you run Doesn't matter what you've seen, where you've been I will come, hold you up, hear you out Let you cry, talk it out Every single time you ask, I'll be there, I won't look back if you ever need my help, oh, then I would come running from the back room. I would do anything to save you, honey. Anything. The moment hey, everyone. Alone, You're at Buffalo Berry. Buffalo Berry Campground in Wyoming. We're just about... 20 miles or so south of Casper, and um, this is our campsite. As you can see, here's our truck for campsite number four. There are only four campsites here. And then we have um, our table and pit and everything, and our Montana. And as you can see, if you notice, we don't have anything hooked up. There's no hookups here. We don't even have our Starlink out. Um, and the reason we do that is because when we put those down and we're near water, as you can see over here, this is the Platte River, and we're very, very close to it. We're talking, you know, maybe 20 yards to the river. Uh, whenever we park near water, we always seem to have problems with um, four-legged critters getting in our rig. And uh, so we don't put down any cables or cords that they could climb up and get into our rig and then we usually spray some things around the the landing gear and the, and the tires so that it hopefully repels them and we may even put out some of our lights for the night we will decide we will put out one of our lights for the night. no that's not what you're saying what are you telling me to say we're gonna be here one oh, night yes. we're probably only going to be here one night because we're just on our way up to devil's tower uh, we've never been there before, so we're just, um, this is just a, kind of a stopover. We went into Casper, spent some time there, did some checking around. There was a bear trap campground that's up high above that looked beautiful, but it's closed, and it looks like we would have a hard time getting into it. Not that the sites were small. We probably could get into most of the sites, but the access road that gets there is almost like a drop-off getting down. And there's no way I would pull my rig over that kind of a ledge to get down once they're off the road. Hopefully, they're making some changes to it. There was a lot of construction going on right now. That's part of why the campground is closed. But um, it's a non-starter for us at this point because of the way it's set up. It's the season of the snakes, guys. Even up here, look at this baby crossing the road. I don't see a tail on him, but he looks like a rattler, but he's, he don't see a rattle. Yeah, I don't see a rattle in the tail, but he's definitely markings. Oh my gosh. Come on, dude, keep going. It's not time for a coffee break, keep moving. Yeah, Patty says keep moving. And you see how he just fades into everything because it, it's camouflagey, whatever. Oh my gosh, what a day. <laughs> 